Hello, uh, my name is Craig Stoffer, and I am going to demonstrate how I approach an oil painting. This is going to be kind of quick. I'm going to try to keep this whole thing within 45 minutes. Uh, just show some of the starting techniques and developing techniques that you use during the oil painting process. This is a blank canvas here, uh, 9 by 12, 9 by 12. Uh, I'm going to use as a reference uh, a plain air study that I did over at Hinkley Park, Hinkley Metro Parks, Hinkley, Ohio, called Top of the Ledges. Uh, this is the this is the painting I'm going to be using as a reference, but I don't I'm not happy with this painting, so I'm going to change the whole color scheme and somewhat of the composition, but it's a point of reference. So I'm gonna set this off to the side where I can sit. And then I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Take my biggest brush, uh, number eight, flat, and I'm going to put a little tone on this canvas so I'm not staring at a blank white canvas. That's kind of intimidating. So we're going to start with a little, a little wash, sort of a warm color. And right now, this is not at all concerned with anything except just getting some coverage on the maybe a little too too warm too light that's okay we can fix that so this is mainly just my thinner is uh a turpentine alternative that's uh odorless it's not turpentine it's turpentine really kind of pretty strong smell uh so this is a uh, Something that's been developed as an alternative. It's called Gamsol, G-A-M-S-O-L. Uh, pretty popular brand. I'm not worried about what this looks like right now, but as I said, but it will happen to you quite a bit where the old canvas will pop out of its holder, but uh, not a problem. I get good and tight. All I'm doing now is I'm just going to wipe this down. Just because this is way more pink than I need right at this point. But you see, now it's no longer white. I have a surface here that I can work with. Won't be the colors I'm going to end up with, but if some of this shows through in the end, that's okay too. Okay, we're going to prop it here. We're going to try to keep. You'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves. That's a personal choice, but I I, uh, I sort of recommend wearing gloves because this stuff is, is dirty. It's going to get all over your hands. Uh, and there is uh, some toxic materials in some of these pigments and such. So an oil paint is a little more permanent than, say, a water-based paint as far as getting rid of it. So while I have this like this, I'm going to kind of Maybe block out a hint of a composition. Okay. All right. So now, now I'm no longer looking at a white canvas. Uh, this is, as I say, helpful. I'm just kind of picking a couple of highlight spots here. You probably can't even see that. Now I'm going to take a small brush. Very small. I mean, the smallest brush I'll use, a number two. Maybe if you can. But it's actually quite small. A little thinner. When we start a painting, we always start with uh, thin, thin, uh, thin paint, and then add thick paint as we as we develop the painting. So the start, the underpainting, you might call it is generally very thinned out. I have a thinner, as I said, this Gamsol. I'm going to establish some of the some of the composition lines now, just a little freehanding. This is a relatively simple composition, I think. You know, I've got a little, a little of this. And like that. Oh, sound effects come in there, too. <laughs> very helpful to have sound effects while you paint. Just joking. Not gonna like it. Kind of just erase it. 
there was a path in that painting. I'm going to give the path a little bit more of a curve than it had in real life there. Uh, just some rough indications of the composition line here. My center of interest is something good to have right from the start. It's going to be right about here, right there. That's going to be uh, two figures uh, hiking, hiking people. And so that's going to be the center of interest. That's where everything is going to be focused as far as the composition goes. So we have a little overhang here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So, see some lines starting to come on here. I hope you can they show up okay in the video. Yes, I wear gloves. Also wearing an apron, a very paint-covered apron. Uh, tend to get so wrapped up in the painting process, I'm not too worried about keeping clean and neat. And uh, so, if you want to save your clothes or at least not have them totally covered in paint. An apron might be a good idea. Not worried about detail at all. Just uh, establishing lines here. So this. If I'm painting over on the right side of the paint, I'm going to kind of cover up a little bit, but, well, it's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of a barking dog. Okay. About uh, about done here with the uh, composition lines. Next step, we're going to be establishing some of the the darkest darks of this paint. Some of the darkest darks. We don't want to get too dark, like completely dark at this point. The darkest part's gonna be this this part gonna be in shadows. The, the sun's coming from this way. So this will be some of the shadows. And just kind of blocking in shapes, not worried about these are a bunch of trees, but I'm not worried about any detail on the trees at this point. Still, this is somewhat thin paint. It's not very thick. Keeping it kind of thin, keeping it kind of loose.
Capital Center. <clears throat> Let me see. This is pretty dark looking, I'm sure, in the video, but it's uh, about as dark as I'm going to go anywhere on this painting, except for maybe a couple of trunks, some of the more important tree shapes that we have. So I'm um, a lot of. My palette's down here in front of me, but I, I'm not going to be able to pick it up and show it. It's kind of a big, heavy affair. But all my paints are mixed. I have a lot of paint mixed up on there. So this is uh, looking into the forest. Uh, this is a big forest here. It tends to be mostly in shadow, and consequently, I'm trying to get cooler colors here. Sort of a gray, but it's got some blue, some violet in it. So a blue gray, violet, blue violet gray, about a six value in terms of one being white, ten being black. This is a little past the halfway point in value. Shadows creeping in from the left hand side of what we're viewing. <clears throat> I don't know if you can tell, but this paint again is 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 quite thin, quite thin. There's nothing very thick, uh, but it's paint. It's paint. It's getting on there. I'm trying to establish a little bit of the composition. Go back to some of this. Now we're almost uh, starting to approach mid-range, mid-range colors. And a lot of the colors, this room I'm in, this is the wall. The other three walls of this room are all windows. So I can look out the windows and get a reference of, of true colors. This is spring. It's springtime. This is April, early April. And trees are just starting to bud, but they don't really have leaves yet. So it's creating a sort of a lot of pastel colors out there. And uh, oh, it's really a really beautiful time of year, actually. Finally done with the winter and everything's brown. We're starting to get... Oh. Get some color in there. Mother Nature here. Going for broad areas again, broad shapes. We're not worried about any detail yet. I know these are all a bunch of trees. I say it's a forest. It's a forest. It is indeed. underpainting. These are more cool colors. There'll be some warm colors that would be more in the foreground because they'll be the parts of the trees that stick out instead of backing the shadows. My apologies for the watchdog. He just likes to hear himself bark. Yes, sir. 
Now we're gonna, we're gonna get some more distant, more distant uh, trees. There's a row of trees that are kind of in the background here. People are pretty small. <laughs> Thanks for wondering. Sure you are. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the distance. Okay, so now at least we have some some value composition here. You can see probably there's some type of a scene, even without any details. You can probably get the feeling that there's some trees and some foreground. This is the foreground and then the sky back here too. That's a obviously a very part of any very important part of any landscape is the sky. So I'm gonna stick with this brush i should have mentioned uh went to a slightly smaller brush than the first big brush i am using this is number six that uh first one was an eight so it's uh we deal with this here so i'm going to go going with this number six just slightly no i think in the sky take that back i'm going to go with the bigger Number eight again. Now the skies, even if there's no clouds in the sky, the sky tends to get lighter as it approaches the horizon during the daytime. Uh, and perhaps a little yellower. Let's see what we got here. Well, it's pretty light. Pretty light. Maybe lighter than I want. Uh, eh, it's going to be a sunny scene. Let's see if the path is lit up. That would be... <clears throat> I'm going to bring this sky down into the trees. It might be lighter than I really want, but I'm going to let it go for a while. And see how it goes here. It looks like fairly bright blue, but it is got a little bit warmer. Uh, and even though blue is a cool color, I've added some warm uh, tones mixed in with it. Some uh, violet and some very, very light, light orange to give it a little bit of warmth. So the scene has warmth and not a cold, cold day. This is actually a pleasant, warm day. That we're depicting here. So, still pretty thin on the paint. You can tell by the way these brushes just uh, throwing the paint down. 
but it's uh, it's pretty thin. <clears throat> One thing that uh, I personally have found while painting skies and skies and trees, even if it's middle of summer and they're fully leafed out, you can still see through the trees, especially at the tops of the trees. So it brings some of the sky color down into the towards the foreground or the middle ground the middle ground just because we're going to paint over this anyways paint over a lot of that it's going to get painted over when we start getting into a little closer to details and final values hues The sky is not the focal point. And I'm not worried about anything dramatic in the sky or like such as clouds. So it's just a sort of a backdrop of the whole thing. It's going to be one very important tree right here. <clears throat> it's going to be one of the more prominent trees. Dominating is a large oak tree. That's what it is. That's another prominent tree, very important tree. This tree coming up here into the sky, and the rest of these are just I'm not going to worry about them so much. <laughs> Dashing a few little cool colors, little dashes of light. But again, this is April. The trees are not fully leafed out. We're going to see a lot of sky coming through. So right now I'm just dashing in some of the sky color down into the trees. And then when I go back and paint the trees again, that will be hopefully show through a little bit, give it the effect of... Uh, the sky behind the trees. I'm doing this path with a similar color because it's a, the path is paved and it's going to reflect, the sky is going to reflect off of the flat surface of this path. Or if this was a river, it would be the same thing or a stream. It would be, it's not a stream, but it could be. And, uh, that also would uh, reflect the sky color because it's laying flat. It's not standing up like the trees. So now, now we've got the darkest dark, some of the middle tones, and the sky, which is generally usually one of the lightest parts of any landscape. So now I'm going to go back to this number six. That I was using on the trees, and I'm going to put in some of this ground, this bit of the trees here that is actually being illuminated by the sun. So it's going to be lighter, but it's also going to be warmer because the sun is hitting it. So we're going to have some warm color here, which is the undertone. The underpainting, if you remember, was a warm color. And that kind of helps, even though I don't have any paint on there. You sort of have a composition already where there's some warm and highlighted areas. A bunch of high grass it hasn't turned green yet, right here in front of this path. Oop. Mix it in with that cool color. The thing I like about oil paints is you start putting it on thick you just cover stuff up such as if there's any mistakes let's do a little, little color right here that's an orange a lighter orange 
And you can see it's quite a contrast now to those cool colors I had been putting in the shadows. You can see this orange is really starting to pop out a little bit there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The most prominent oak tree that's right here. We'll be painting some of that trunk when I get going, so I'm indicating it already. But there'll be branches. Now these warm colors are going right over those background values and shades. Sun's catching some of the tops of these trees here. The sun's coming down. This is in the afternoon. It's uh, later in the day. Anybody's familiar with uh, Hinkley Park, and this is top of the ledges, and you enter the roads out here, and you enter down this driveway and end up at the parking lot. So I'm looking out at the driveway that goes into top of the ledges. So, so the sun's coming down here. It's getting getting lower in the sky because it's later in the day. <clears throat> Still keeping it pretty thin, too. It's pretty thin here. Well, it was a dash of thick paint because I wanted to cover up some blue color that I put in there and I just didn't want it to be blue. So to lay it on a little thicker, you can put the reason you start with thin and then go to thick is you put thick over thin and it'll show up. You put thin over thick, it's not going to work at all. Not with oil paints. They're, they're sort of thick. Thick paints to begin with, they have a real thickness or viscosity. Because it's a, because it's an oak tree, there's still a, a few of last year's leaves clinging to some of these branches. You can indicate that a little bit there, because the sun's lighting that up to you. And down low to the ground, bushes grow inside the side the woods. Well, now we're almost starting to look like a little bit of detail coming out of those trees. I throw a trunk in now and then so I don't lose track of where I'm at. Tree in there.
<laughs> Standing back, taking a look here. Now I'm gonna get this more definition and end of this path. This is the focal point right there. And And the paint started to get a little thicker. I don't know if you can tell, but it is getting thicker. This paint was a little pure. There's no, there's no thinner in it. A few more tree trunks. Out of here. A couple of, maybe a couple of beech trees, white trunks, that oak tree, got some branches. Lots of rags, go through a lot of rags. Keep the brushes clean in between colors. Color into these background trees. One to the side of the road. Don't want it just to be flat. A little thicker now, the paint's getting thicker all the time. I've been filling with this quite a bit. I think it's time to start, we start putting in some of the, some detail. So I'm not going to film this long enough to be Fully complete shadow on the side of the path. Get my original brush that I laid out the composition lines with. It's this number two. Very small brush. Hmm. And we've got our figures, and I'm going to indicate the figures. Uh, I think I'll start with a, they're going to be kind of shaded. Very tiny. I don't even know if that shows up on this video. It's really small because they're way off. They're walking. Well, maybe they got a dog with them. I they should. Huh? Two, two people. So I'm just making two dark lines here. I'm worried about any faces or.
So I'm get some dark, darker colors back in now. Going back in a little definition of the. <clears throat> trees. With that showing up, eh, that thing's probably showing up. Wish I could get this whole thing closer, but I I'm kind of standing in between the camera and the camera and the canvas. Let's for the fun of it, we'll uh, put on a little highlight. These people that just walked into the sunlight. So, the sun in their bodies will be illuminated by the sun. Just beyond the edge of them. Some, some weeds, weeds that are grown, tall grasses that have died off over the winter and haven't grown back high enough to come back and be showing as much of anything yet. <laughs> Sorry if I'm blocking off the video here. Small brush. I don't like to use a small brush for very long. Only maybe in the final stages of a painting. <clears throat> one tree coming out of this prairie they have here. This park here keeping keeping this this part of the park is actually uh natural prairie grasses. They're leaving it grow a while and once in a while mowing it just so they keep the big bushes and trees from taking over. So it's Kind of an interesting endeavor there, I think. But I like that. So, this time for another back to the uh, number six brush. <laughs> So, catching up some of the highlights of this side of the woods. 
certainly would be. There's trees all the way through this thing, so they get uh, lit up or not. As the tops of the trees head up towards the sky, they get thin. And what I'm doing with the paint is I'm hoping to get a little bit of a you know, wispy effect. I'm sort of feathering a little bit of color in here. Not trying to portray individual branches too much, but the groupings of the branches. I guess maybe I'm giving you my best impersonation of Bob Ross. I'm going to try to make this painting and under 45 minutes from start to finish. You did see a blank canvas. There was no editing. So, so about two minutes, two minutes to be a painting done in 45 minutes. Indicate a little with brush strokes, a little bit of undergrowth or that prairie grass I was talking about. A little bit of more shadow areas. I think we get to get a little more, a little more darkness. The lower parts of the woods, just a little more darkness there. <clears throat> Obviously, it's still quite a bit of detail I could add to this at this point, but I have, I uh, hopefully have created sense of depth and a sense of a landscape where there's in the foreground flat grass trees in the middle trees in the background the sky behind the whole thing which is what i was aiming for here a bit more in shadow areas here so. Background trees coming through, foreground trees right there, if you will. Now this is this is the point of a painting where you start really making the fine adjustments, sort of fine tuning, if you will, uh, that really slows the process down. I was always moving, always working on this thing. Now you gotta start thinking, well, this, this needs a little touch of here, a little touch there. But overall, um, overall, this is a good start of a painting, at least a proper start to a painting. And uh, so, I'm going to end the video now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. My name is Craig Stauffer. That is S as in Sam, T-A-U, F as in Frank, E-R, one F. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching.